aufpassen mit der Wert. Whoever is special talk today. Uh, it's an outline uh, talk for today. Uh, it's a special invitation uh, to Sir for uh, uh, giving his talk on AFM and other parts. So let me introduce the small brief CV of Sir, and then we will continue our session. Yes, sir. Uh, Professor uh, V. Ganeshan, Sir, currently working in the Dean Research with Medicaps University in Dort. Formerly, he, because he was a center director, UGC DAI Consortium for Scientific Research in Dort. Uh, sir has pursued his PhD from uh, Madras University and postdoc from IIT Madras. Uh, he served as scientist D and H from 1991 to 2013 at UGC DAI CSR in Dort and central director from June 2013 to May 2019. Uh, sir has guided more than uh, 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 sir has an experience of uh, more than 40 years out of the 37 years in uh, goal surveys non forgetting of uh, sophisticated laboratories low temperature cryogenic and spm laboratories uh, his research uh, is basically based on the lowest temperature range of 250 milli um, kelvin and with high magnetic field uh, he has a record in MP private in initiating large number of CSR collaborative projects with RRCAD, Synchrotron, more than 200 CSR projects countrywide. Uh, Sir has uh, more than 480 publications with a citation of uh, about 10,000, which H index of 59, index of 249. Uh, the area of research interest uh, belongs to low temperature physics, cryogenic scanning, crop microscope, nanobio, and major area of interest is physics of material with novel ground states, correlated electron system, metal insulated transition, superconductivity, and physics with biological system. Uh, Sir so is a recipient of CSR Scientific Excellence Award in 2010. Uh, Sir is a liaison officer for UGC DAE CSR 
Kalkappam node for six years. Uh, he is the president of IPA in God chapter. IPA stands for Indian Peaks Association. Uh, sir has guided more than 17 uh, research students and 10 uh, postgraduate and master's students as an guide. Uh, sir has handled uh, three DST projects and two UGC projects. A uh, number of project workshops conducted uh, by Sir, more than 10 workshops and conducted by the Sir, and many more as centre director, around 25. Uh, sir has given more than two, uh, 150 invited lecture talks in various uh, national and international conferences. And uh, Sir has published more than 125 conference processing publications. I visited many countries out of them, Germany, and uh, some places are out of that. Uh, with this short brief, I request uh, Ganeshan Sir to start his talk. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. sir good afternoon, almost. <laughs> I'm very sorry for a small delay. And I apologize for the delay to all of you. And thank you for your interest. And uh, I think my screen is visible, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's visible, sir. Yeah. Visible. Sir. Yeah, as as Hugo said today, even though I'm a low temperature physicist, but I thought of spent some couple of decades in scanning probe microscopes in the AFM. So I thought it's a very beautiful characterization tool. I will explain it. First, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ramesh Saxena and the organizing committee of uh, IPS Academy at Jabhua for the invitation. I also thank Medicap University and the city Sandur for about 30 years there. And all these MPCS, UCD, as I say, for projects. I also thank Dr. Nanda, Dr. Chitnis, two doctors who helped me to do with biological systems, my guru, Professor Asin Vasan. And most of the work that I am presenting has been done by Manju Mishra Patidar and Deepthi Jain, two of my students. And uh, of course, some of some part uh, in the photoconducting material has been done by Nitu Badera. She was a student of Professor S.B. Sivasta from Ujjayi, but worked with us, presented at Vaishnav. So I thank all of them. And then I'll try to go back to the, uh, at the areas. And this is mainly meant for stimulating some interest into the slightly unconventional microscope because we don't normally use Our researchers normally use uh, optical microscope very heavily and then directly goes to transmission electron microscope. But then AFM is something very interesting. Not very popular earlier. Now it is getting popular, so but very useful for nanotechnology and nanoscience imaging. Therefore, I thought that I will show you. And whatever images I'm showing you, most of them here, are from our own lab. So it is from our own experience. So I thank many of the people. For example, uh, uh, the way that I, this is my first image, looking like a very beautiful golden viscous. It's nothing but a laser ablated using PLD on, uh, it's called YBCO, yttrium barium copper oxide superconducting thin films. Uh, the first image that we did it from TFR and got it simulated because at the time the image in ACM was not coming correctly and then this AFM was a new tool. Uh, that was the first tool and second is my micros our microscope in that's why I'm second in that rhymes and then very useful for all the users as the first. Uh, half a micron beautiful uh, structures have been seen. So then uh, we, we started working on this uh, in our laboratory buying and doing it out. And then you can see that uh, the row of atoms of graphite, you can see it very easily. Micron graphite and uh, LB films. Some of the very beautiful 2D materials, you can go down to the scale is only about three, three or four nanometers. So each atom can be revolved in a beautiful external lattice. This is a resolution that you can do in case of scanning tunneling microscope as well as scanning atomic force microscope. And then next one is that this is about a very nice refined pressing particles. Uh, inside there is a Fe3O4 nanoparticle. Why this drug delivery clear, how you are using it nanoparticles uh, is very interesting. It's about 20 to 30 nanometer size particles. To also when you coat it with refab resin, they can carry this to various places in your body, can deposit the place where you want. Suppose there's a local magnetic field, the olden days they used to use this kind of a small rings and all, metallized magnetized rings. Then the medical I mean, the molecule will stay for a longer time, so releases will be more. Then this is something like that, uh, sub-micron structures of the 
thin films when you go say the, this is about 50 nanometer thin film it's not continuous it is like the one banana tree is there there's a small banana trees are growing out like this this very beautiful growth modes can be seen they are discontinuous if you pass a current electron cannot jump from here to here and you see a very beautiful metallic state attraction yeah, physics is there but then uh, microstructure is very important to understand what was the physics behind it Example, I'm telling you, iron is a beautiful material, but it's useless as such if unless you put a small amount of four percent carbon, it becomes a steel. The moment you put a steel, steel has a very low mechanical strength, and also can make a few bridges and all, then you can make stainless steel for utensils. But then what has happened with that carbon? Where the carbon goes and sits and how the structure modifies, what all materials transition, modernistic transition takes place, etc. Microscopically. How many years? Hundreds of years people use TEM to study all this. You know? So that microscopic information, very useful to study what happened to higher levels. And then uh, this, this all this is nothing but a very beautiful arrangement of the fellow focus. Uh, this is done by one of our students, Deepthi Jain. ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ get a current and the current comes out only at some places not everywhere uniformly this is because of the rain boundaries may have a defect so it have a defect band gap as a defect so lower energy excitations are possible i can see the current coming out so you can tell them which which part of this particle will be conducting or not this is something that uh, i forgot to show the afm part afm shows a very beautiful grains and grain motors but the magnetism is nothing very interesting a percolating magnetism you put a cat here and a rat here the cat never catches the rat so you cannot see this is beautiful percolating paths magnetic domains can be seen and this is very beautiful butterfly the butterfly wings are very beautiful photonic crystal now you can see regular periodic arrangement of half a micron structures biological structures are there any regular arrangement of atoms to call them as a lattice this lattice is uh, same thing is also lattice but in each each of this structure is about 500 half a micron half a micron is something like about a visible wavelength range therefore they will show a spectacular light in the visible range they will scatter like a black scattering so the, their uh, structures can be visible called is called lateral force microscopy i will talk on this when i go to a little bit advanced study on this so what uh, this is very interesting what we had earlier in two microscopes only very really small it's like a coffee flask size and in uh, a small room only thing is you need to be vibration free table or the whole lab should be isolated that i will tell you it's only 2 nanometers in 2 to 0.5 nanometers you can see the atoms done in the system the concept is something like that you have a very short probe very short probe okay so and then uh, this is sample and they are almost touching but they won't touch each other okay that i will tell you why <laughs> so for that you need a precision z axis piezoelectric device a piezoelectric device is nothing but you apply electric field it will contract or expand so a piezoelectric transducer is very important and xy is like in a tv scan how you put over the surface x direction y scan therefore you can see the two dimensional scan is possible by x and y scanners but third dimension is possible is it therefore you are not seeing just a microscope like optical other thing you will also measure the depth and height so it's a three dimensional topography is possible for you and for all these things very interesting is that you need to have analog to digital digital electronic interface therefore a very high level of uh, digital signal processing is also important digital manipulation is also important so you quantize the signals and you can give this so the step wise quantization of the signal every step like we want 1 nanometer 2 nanometer 100 nanometer we can see that very interesting so very large amount of electronics and after getting the image also image processing is also very good so lot of amount of software developers are there in fact nowadays software is more costly than the hardware itself it is very costly and very important the bottom is vibration estimation 
When I talk, you are able to listen because it's a vibration that goes to your ears. So somebody speaks in the air from room, you will not get the signal at the atomic level. You will see only noise. Because the vibrations are in the order of a very high, high wavelength and then it will spoil you. Therefore, normally about half a hertz level, people who work on that know that. You have to bring it up. Otherwise, they all vibration pendulums can be used or we used to have a dig up the things and go there. Now, the basic of concepts for all of them, whatever I showed you here, we said first master, master invention is scanning tunneling microscope where the sample is a conducting and tip is also conducting. For example, if the sample is, uh, uh, why I'm telling you is very interesting is a manifestation of quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, if there is a potential well and then it's a very big hill, the electron is here, it cannot jump. Because energy is not there, potential energy is very high, kinetic energy is very small. So, electron cannot come to this side classically. But in quantum mechanically, this electron is a wave function. This wave function can leak through that and a smaller amount of the probability is one is to one million. So, there are one million electrons are there, you will get one electron here. So, current is very small. Otherwise, there is a finite probability of electron crossing the barrier is possible. And that current gives you is exponentially varying as a function of the barrier width. That is what very important. So now if the one side is sample, one side is sample, then this convolution of the this stuff is possible. That's what the mother inversion are very interesting. And uh, history of the Nobel Prize is also very interesting because Raska, who invented electron microscopy, also got Nobel Prize. He has to wait something like 47 years to get the Nobel Prize. Along with this fellow to share, he was not even vehemently opposing. Then finally they concluded, no, no, both are equally good because Electron microscope is ruling the whole mechanical industries and metallurgical industries. AFM just came and they started showing the atom so easily. So it's a very beautiful euphoria. And equally, both are very important concepts. Concept, Nobel Prize given for the concept. The current will decay exponentially in the function of distances. That is what very important. And if this current, if you do, it's very interesting for you. You can also get a small knowledge about the work function. And the convolution of the See, if the electron has to go from one place to other place, that must be an occupied density of states according to our band theory. It should be there in the solid. And the other side should be an unoccupied density of states should be there, so electron go and sits there. So it gives you convolution between the two. So that is very interesting. So you can see the density of states also. For example, if you differentiate the tunneling current, it will get you, uh, apart from some constants, rho s is sample density of states, rho t is sample density of states for the cases of a tip. T, T is tip, S is sample. This is a both convolution. So what we should do is sample is normally unknown. A tip, you take a tungsten, it's a very good metal or gold, very noble metals. Then you can use a tungsten tip or a gold tip or something like that, where whose properties are known to you. Then properties of unknown also can be studied with here. So you're measuring the current, not only seeing the atom, Machine will also tell you whether a particular sample is insulator or a metal or a superconductor or anything. For example, even for superconducting, the people use you, they say the linear IV, IV, IV is proportional to V, but there is a non-linearity at the center of bias. Up to some voltage, there is no current and it goes. So if you do a differential conduction, it's called very beautiful. You can see very nice. There is no density of states at the Fermi level. Because two electrons form a pair and they conduct it, there's a density of states is lost at the Fermi level. So you can see that this is called STS plot. It's a very famous tool. Very interesting to study. Semiconductor, may, it will be an electron volt, like uh, silicon, germanium point seven one electron volt. In superconductor, it is only one or two million electron volt because all these superconductor happens at minus 269, 4 Kelvin, 10 Kelvin like this. Superconducting phenomena is very low temperature phenomena. Therefore, you will see one million electron volt is one, 10 Kelvin. So you can see that they will all happen at low temperatures. So the beauty of that, then if it is not conducting, what to do? So you, the microscope has become useful. So same group along with body has inverted atomic force microscope. This has become very popular than the AFM because AFM is just very conducting tip and it has also very limitation and very sensitive, very high resolution, but very sensitive. Not all materials. You need a saw of a single crystal something. But AFM is a bit rugged. I will tell you why. What happened? They put a small diamond, very small, micro diamond, nano diamond in fact. Okay. And then you can see that the, this tip and the sample, okay, it, there's a cantilever, tip is, and there is a laser beam 
will come here and gold plated so reflected goes to your photo director this photo director has a quadrant photo director that you can see left side right side or uh, top and bottom signals can be there it has been given like a four quadrants and then you can top what top two quadrants you can use it one and four and two and four you can do differential signal for the height otherwise left side like that this one uh, one and two and three and four quadrants can be used for lateral information so now what happened if nothing is there, there is no magnetism, there is no electricity, nothing is there, two atoms, and they come to inert atoms, they are all separated by a small distance, you will see one force, in the absence of electrical force, magnetic force, nothing, you can see that simply, you will see a van der Waals force, van der Waals force will never die. Yeah, but they, that will be seen only very near the atoms, so it, this, you, this curve is called the Nyar Jones position, you know that. You can see Van der Waals forces are highly attractive at long distances. When you come lower, it's called hardcore potential, hardcore repulsion. It will repel when you come to low temperatures. So it's a positive or negative. They are very interesting. There's an equilibrium point at which it will start at interacting very heavily. This point has to be understood. They will know that, but they vary as 1 by R power 6 or 1 by R power 12. They are not uh, normal uh, inverse pile up, not be obeyed. But the power of this small, very fine laser, especially a red light laser, so that normal visible light can be avoided. Uh, and then uh, you can use a lower addresses also, but then it's better to do an AR ribbon, it doesn't heat or anything. So nowadays, even uh, 680 or 1000, above 1000 amps, I mean, nanometers lasers are available. And then, so you can no heating effort will be, this will be reflected. So it's a lamp and scale arrangement of a galvanometer in your school, which you are studying. How to displacement, small displacement in my county. What is happening here is nanometer displacements, but because of this lamp and scale arrangement, this photo is very heavily done. The top and bottom is height will come. Left hand side, you will see the frictional, let me frictional signal also will come. It's called lateral force microscope. So you can see that uh, using electron microscope, you can see you see a tip. They, they use triangular cantilever because of the stability instead of rectangular. And the small black dot, if you see, it will be a big diamond like this, okay? Uh, the vertex is around, uh, the sharpness of the diamond will be of the order. Diamond is hardest material. So it remains up to atomic level. Now, artificial diamonds are very expensive. They shall, really, what do you call it? Uh, silicon 3, SA3 and 4, silicon nitrate. That is the most uh, hardest material. So you can see here, this is what happened. Now you, people use uh, so amount of energy. Yeah? When you are vibrating, this tip should not vibrate. We have to scan it now. When you scan anything, you know, your, your whole setup will scan over the sample. Therefore, one should do that. One, to, one should use this uh, geometry basis vibration. And if you know how the TV works, then you know that the X and Y scans are exactly like the TV scans, what you do, a uh, sort of voltage and the raster scan. And then for Z, you will use a cylindrical piece for, you will always uh, put an electrode in the, inside the cylinder and outside the cylinder, it will go up and down. So it's very interesting. It's a very special, I don't want to. Now I will tell you the way highest resolution to normal life you know, problems I will talk it because everybody want to have gross atomic resolution. That's true. This is one example of a student from Dr. Deshpande Steen was he was a user. So he's a very single crystal of tungsten diselenite. And those who are working in condensed matter physics will appreciate it. This is a very beautiful two-dimensional superconductor also when you interplate with the water. But uh, otherwise, this uh, WSC2 is a two-dimensional layer nowadays is also a topological material and then you when you see this you see a lot of stripes like this then by seeing these stripes uh, is very important the cross I, uh, something is missing my slide i'm not able to show you this is like a stark cases steps from one other step to step height is 1.17 nanometer. You see the kind of resolution this can be measured. By drawing one line, you can see uh, like uh, steps sort of voltage. From one step to another step, it is around point. I mean, uh, 1.17 means about 11.7 Armstrong. One nanometer is 10 Armstrong. 
So like uh, is, is, this is equivalent to a unit cell dimensions of the WSC2. It is happening, then the growth must answer. A crystal normally grows due to some different etc. So then it some of very famous material science is called screw dislocation. It looks like a screw. What happened to screw one one rotation? It will move up or down a screw by means of one that which is equivalent to whatever is there. Here, if you study solid steel physics, there is a burger vector. For materials, this is screw dislocation. The pitch will be equivalent to one C, C lattice parameter. So you can be able to see this, these are all very beautiful crystal, very nice, good quality crystal grown by means of a uh, dislocation, screw dislocation with the burger vector of 1.17 nanometer, 11.7 Armstrong, which is nothing but the C axis. It can be C axis, C axis initially C, C if I say 2C, 3C, integral multiples of that will happen. It's the beauty of the crystallography. Now, in this one of the small, this each width is about 5 micron. This is about 10 to 20 is there. Therefore, it will be around 250 to 500 nanometer width in each step width. You go and sit, it's a big 250 nanometer, is so big. Na? You go and sit your tip here and focus it to a very high resolution. Electron atom or selenium atom is very difficult to understand in the AFM. Very, very difficult. Therefore, STM will be very useful because tungsten is metallic and selenium is non metallic. And application of positive bias, you will see the tungsten. If application of negative bias, you will see selenite, etc., can be studied. That's why scanning and microscopy is a far better tool than this. Otherwise, at least up to the level that you can go, that is uh, what is the structure you can see. <laughs> <laughs> the distance between each atom is around 0.373, that means 3.73 Armstrong. That's what that distance normally between sodium and chlorine is about 5.5 Armstrong. I mean, so each distance will be, each atom will be around 2.5 Armstrong, you can see. No? So this, you can see that what you talk about it. Now, what you do in this? You see the force curve, whatever happening here, in the tip when they approaches, you are at large distances, then when you go nearer to the sample, sample attracts it. It's a Van der Waals attraction. It jumps to contact. Then after contacting, you try to remove it. It won't do. So this is, it is sticking here. So cantilever will start bending. You apply more force, then it will start coming out full off. So all these things can be seen by means of measuring the force curves. So at last distance, nothing will happen. When you go nearer to the sample, it will jump to contact. Then it goes straightly repulsion because it will be too much force and it is repulsing. When you come down, it won't follow the same path. It follows a different path. There is a loss is the area under the curve normally is, suppose you saw BH low, area under the curve will give energy loss, Carnot cycle, and between the PV cycle or whatever, TS cycles, you can see area under the curve will give losses. These losses are very interesting. Using this, you can study whether they are large sample addition, small sample addition, or they stiff sample, or they hard sample, where the sample has spoiled because of the deformation. All mechanical properties can be thought. So it's a very beautiful nano mechanical characterization. I hope that I explained this here. And this is the just beautiful uh, slides for different times, like how the islands are forming, how the material form in the forms of uh, layer by layer growth, or island by island growth, or island and layer growth. There are a lot of growth modes are available, can be studied. That's what happened, and these are quantum dots, small, small particles, and then sub nanometer. These quantum particles can be in a triangular shape, a circular shape, or down at whatever shape. Anything can be done. All of them has a very different applications as far as the nanophotonics are concerned. And then these are very fine, different temperatures, how the nanostructures form. Some of them uniform, some of them forming the cluster, but still get uniform. Some of them try to reorient them into a different structures can be studied. Very easy to for them. See, this is one of the very first experiments long back. What we have done it. We had a superconductor. We read it with a high energy ions from nucleus and central delay. Problem is that uh, why we radiate it? You want to create a defect. Why to create a defect? Superconductor, otherwise, pure superconductor is useless. If you put a defect, then it is current carrying capacity, critical current density increases. That is why it is. 
when we did it here and you can see the after radiation different structure this is before and this after so what happens something is there eroded away for every every square where the ground boundaries are eroded away then we understand these are all metallic and grain boundaries are insulating because of the fact therefore thermal energy is highly deposited in the boundary it's called thermal spike model and then you can able to get it these are very interesting structures An electron from here it, it cannot go no homic conduction so there is a non linear conduction will be there here as is shown here and this is simple polyaniline if you introduce with a very high energy you can see all the polymers what will happen you break their hydrogen will evolve nitrogen also will go away only carbon left over carbon at high temperature and high pressure because very high energy ions how much ions 6 million electron volt This is not small. I see the ten years, six million electron volt or hundred million electron volt. Such a high energy deposit in a small distance, too much energy temperature will go up. So at high temperature they become diamond. That's what is nano diamonds. You can study them using the friction. Second, this is diamonds. You are seeing this there. How hard or soft using this lateral force microscopy. So of course, blisters they form thermal skies and Coulomb explosion. Many models can work out. There are a lot of such things which we don't want to. So one of the beautiful thing thing we we also ever reveal in our country first time is that very interesting uh, is that you take a silicon and read it it's a beautiful peak and you started into it so it is like a taking a hammer and hitting a material lot of defects will come so it become amorphous ultimately it become amorphous but amorphous after we become amorphous change the direction this is what you are doing you are changing the beam direction then you can see a beam comes here takes all the material and put it here as it is like a gardener taking all the mud from one place to another place to make a plantation so this is called lateral mass transport this is done by electronic excitation because 200 million electron volt you don't see nuclear collisions at all those who work in radiation will understand it so this has been a very popular these two papers are very popular We first time in India we told them this electronic excitation induced scattering surface roughness will happen. This is very interesting discovery at that time. Then we have seen how it is uh, really uh, copper nitrate rods. They are forming the poles of degree and how if we change the direction, how it is going along the direction of the ion beam, it takes a material and all those form formation of which has appeared in ion and nano technology. And we have also said how these rings can be collapsed, and finally, rods, nano rods, can be as a function of annealing. So these are all very interesting papers over our uh, collaborators have come, and some of the I think one of the collaborators of uh, Nitu Bhavna has done from Ujjain chemically prepared nano dots and nano wires. I mean, nano rods can be done for. Uh, Copper ferrite particles. So the size dependent magnetism we want to study. So if you make a nano particle of 10 nanometer, 20 nanometer, 100 nanometer, how the magnetism goes from bulk to nano. Only the beauty of this chemical precipitation is that you can produce all the particles of same size and same shape. No, no physical method can do. Chemistry is very interesting. So that's what we are trying to show. Very difficult experiment because done in a powder. Powder also will move when the tip moves on that. That's very difficult. You need a patient to do that. But then we did a magnetization also for that. Then we work on a scaling called Gaubon scaling. How the coercivity is? The thickness is only 10 nanometer, 20 nanometer, 30 nanometer, 40 nanometer. After that, this scaling will deviate. This is very interesting. So this is something with respect to how different microstructures evolve. This is a resistance called metallic attraction, the high resistance material as a function of temperature. So understand this, we did it. So it is very powerful tool to study how it is happening. There are many such things I will note. This is one of the examples called uh, up to the atomic dissolution. See, there are some materials called uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic components. They have. They will assemble. Self assembly is possible. This is like a lotus flower and lotus stem. Lotus stem likes the water, so it is inside it. Lotus flower don't like the water; they float. So keep all the lotus buds together. What will happen? They form a self assembly. It's called up. You can use a landmark doctor truck for it, and you can make them to stick and make a very beautiful macular structures or like Sita is very example. So you can see that until when they make their surfaces can be very easily visible away from without any further processing. Very soft material. You can't do anything. You can't coat silver. You can't do conducting etc. 
So you can see the very beautiful hexagonal arrangements. And then uh, you do a Fourier transform of these six spots you get it. See, normally from Fourier transform reciprocal lattice we have learned all over crystallography and went to direct imaging. It's only model. Even DNA is done with the normal reciprocal lattice imaging. I mean, do a diffraction and make a model to sort it. Now you are going to reverse way. You are seeing the material to understand you go to reciprocal. Now, a bit uh, a, a, a special thing is that what you do, if there is a soft material, what will happen? Like a polymer or like a biological, like a E. coli, bacteria, how to view it? Very difficult for a phone. So they invented a beautiful material. That's, you just take another piezoelectric. This is a piezoelectric silicon cantilever. They keep one more, one more piezo here and apply electric field, for to piezo. X, Y, Z already here. It is there and this is one more extra for the trend. This will give a oscillating electric field. The tip also will oscillate up and down. You do once away from the sample, or come nearer to the sample. When you come nearer to only, you have force. Otherwise, you don't, have, you don't apply constantly force. Therefore, soft procedures can be seen here. A very big deal. Now, in the same mode, you apply a small magnetic material coating, like COCR, magnetic material. So this is very small, five nanometer only magnetic material. So you should not touch it, otherwise it will go bad. Otherwise the magnetic, small magnetic field is enough. Even samples magnetic field is enough to magnetize this spins. So when you come nearer to your sample magnetic field, normally magnetism can be explained means of a Curie Weissler. These domains are very important for the domain theory of magnetism. Everyone must have studied in their BSc. So if there is a, suppose if there is a ferromagnetic materials, you have an up domain and then there's a down domain. In between, there's a domain wall will be there. So when you come, if you move the scan over this, you will see that the deflections of the cantilever will be accordingly to map. This up one signal, down one signal, there is in between the signal will be there. So that means it will tell you that's what this is happening. It's a computer memory CD, CD drive. So now see, it's nothing, just ordinary material, but here the magnetism, how bits and bytes are stored will be. So this is something to know that I don't want to move into it too much into this. All effort can be used to make man. That's what a very big system. You can do the, all this AF on the CM and all probe, etc. at low temperatures. And then uh, now the beauty, this is what I was saying. You see, normally it's like a student scale for students who used to expand them. You see, if you take a magnet, these magnetic lines of force are like this. This so much is lost. No? You keep another magnet down, then the sideway loss is avoided, only top and bottom. And top and bottom also you put keep us, then it will be like this. It is happens naturally by forming instead of a single domain, it makes multi-domain only to preserve your magnetism. So demagnetism field otherwise it will demagnetize the So by doing that. When you go from one domain to another domain, there is a place called domain wall. This is discovered by the Kittel. It's called Kitten domain wall. And 180 degree, because this up spin is a down spin, in between it changes spin slowly. It won't do suddenly. If you do it suddenly, it needs lots of energy. So, so the width of this domain wall is called Kittel domain or Kittel wall. That you can see them. And uh, there are various things of magnetism. You can see the magnetism, not only measuring at the, just its slope, but what happens. For example, the thin film structures. In the thin, thin film, its thickness is very small. Domains are very large and they are lateral, parallel to the sample. It's called class bow tie. It's normal gents used to wear a tie in the collar, not a long time, it's small, called collar tie. So it is like this. You can see white is white to white and black to black is like a 180 degree contrast. So uh, these two are very beautiful. Uh, people have, need to know a little bit on magnetism. And if thickness, if you increase it more, this is about 20 to 30 nanometers, about 300 nanometers. Then you can see the, all the domains, they will change. You will see a percolating circular domains. The width of these ripples, you can measure, and it will go inversely as a function of thickness, and this scaling also to, available to you. That's what I said, uh, first page, third page. See, the, it's only simple dots, grains, small grains and grain boundary. This is a nickel on silicon oxide. There's nothing, only grain and grain boundary, nothing small, small, Spherical particles, but right side is the magnetism. The domain is very beautiful, percolating domain. The domain structures can be visualized how this domain walls moves, when they move, what kind of voltage it happens, or what kind of temperature changes, work on work on sun effect. Everything can be studied in a very fantastic. People are doing a lot of things. Now, uh, this is something on example is done in optical microscope. 
uh, how the magnetic domains are, mechanical domains are moving as a whole. They just decorated with the small iron particle, copper particles, and measure using a microscope. Okay, you see this modern city one. Why uh, this is a very special material? It's called shape memory materials. I think I will have a slide here. Ah, this is a slide. What happened? There are some material. They remember the shape. Nickel titanium is one. All our teeth uh, implants are using. Same thing like uh, nickel magnesium is a shape memory. So the magnetic force microscopy. What happened? If you apply magnet in some particular portion, there are to ferromagnetic transmissions. See, if there is a spin star there, they are all arranged in one direction to ferromagnet. Other domain will be arranged in another direction. If you now apply magnetic field, what happen? Only magnetic spins will change. It will change to same in the direction of applied field. In the direction of applied field, it changes. It but here you see that whole yellow material changes to direction. It goes, to, I mean, it is not only spin still changing, the whole mechanical, mechanical arrangement, whole mechanical transformation takes place and they all arrange. So by magnetism, you can change the material, mechanical property. This is very interesting. Okay. So that is the first order transition. This is called Mortensitic transition. Also, it has a paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, also oscillate to Morton. All are mixed at one particular transition. That is why this happened. So then we used to do this uh, magnetic domains on that. In one of the small, there's long domains, there's a short domains. Uh, one is called uh, these domains, another is called nano domains, whatever. You can sit and you can vary as a function of height. So when you go higher and higher, inverse coil, uh, no? so it will, forces will decay. When the forces will be seen, one by r power six and r power 12, right? very nearer to the sample. But at far places, magnetism is very strong. Inverse coil will obey and it will be two. You can see that. So you can measure this magnetization as a function of temperature and magnetic field also. That's what, you know, this is much higher versions are available in our consortium. So the final one is that whether it is soft or hard, we can do using a diamond tip. You can put a deformation. The next picture I will show you very nicely. See, for example, you take an nano rod. Nano rods, why you want? The strength is very high now. So go and sit diamond, diamond and division. The shape changes, you can see them. And how much force you applied. So force by area is assessed. How much change upon original shape, new shape, what is the change in shape is called strain. So you get elasticity now assessed by strain. See, these things are very interesting to you know about it. Another one which, uh, with uh, Dr. Neetu Badera, he said that there's a small, how to measure, which and also was working, photoconductivity. It's a cadmium sulfate film sprayed by spray paralysis. They grow, they made a setup in our own laboratory. They came from UK and they do to make measurements. So do a small photodiodes and then apply current. And whenever you apply current, current will come. I mean, like if you apply, if it's on the LED, you get the current. So chop goes on. Then a lot of relaxation can be studied. And you can also study that if you, in the dog, it will be like this. If you apply light and then remove the light after five minutes, still the current will continue for a longer time. But persistent photocurrent, like persistent current in superconductor, there's a persistent photocurrent. This can be measured using the, this setup. But for the case of AFM, here also what you do, in the same setup, you shine a light, then you can do that. For that conducting probe, you should use it. And this is what this is a serious sample is how the current goes in particular particular direction, which direction it goes in the system you can see this. So we used to study this, this very interesting stuff. Only in grain boundaries, most of the current sub -mandal. Normally it has a band gap is the electron volts, so you can only UV they will excite it. But even in optical visible light currents are coming, then why? This can be able to good answers for that. That's what we did it long back. It's a combination. It's a very interesting uh, photoconducting problem kind of to study. See, for example, without light, current is very, so with light, several orders of magnitude, current is very high. In one nano rod, this is not done with a multimeter. This is just my local IV car. In one of the nano rods, how the light happen? So very localized, very large patience is needed. First, you should see the nano rod. Then you should convert from AFM to conducting AFM. Then you should measure, then you should switch on the lights. You have to make a dark everything. And then again, expose the light, again, close other stay lights. Uh, good experiments, but you can have good see. The third application is called electric force mix. So I have started with the atomic force microscope, mother of invention is scanning tunneling microscope. Then I went mechanical property, then I went magnetic property, then I went conducting property. Then I go for the called electric force microscope. Mind you, I specialized it a long time. Here, what happened, you take a polymers and then uh, you, you can do charging of the polymers using corona. In polymer being a bad conductor, the charges will stay. 
Therefore, you have defect dipoles, not only a normal dipoles, also defect dipoles. In all dialectics, there are two dipoles will be there. One is a inherent, if there's a paralytic or ferroelectric, inherent dipoles will be available. And whatever charges you are putting, if it is negative charge, the surrounding automatically has to develop the opposite charge. Therefore, this is considered to be a virtual dipoles, and then you can see them. So these currents and their presence can be felt by using this microscope. This is a polymer surface, nothing you have seen. I am applying zero volt, this is a contrast, plus four volt, plus eight volt, plus 12 volt, minus minus. You see that the contrast goes down or up in a systematic fashion. If I do a three dimensional, you can see the, how the really the contrast changes here. Contrast of the whatever voltage or diffraction you measure it. This is possible because of your machine, the electric field over it. So locally, how they behave, you can, and then these steps can be measured, and you can do some modeling on that system, okay, with a non-symmetrical parabola, and you can shift it. It's a second order equation, the frequency, resonance frequency shift. I told you the tip is vibrating, and that vibration frequency will change. When the frequency changes, the phase also will change, so amplitude also will change. So you can see that, keep the phase I mean, amplitude constant, you can do frequency mapping like ADT or keep frequency constant amplitude mapping or both, both, but keep only the phases change for phase contrast microscope. You will see a lot of microscope develops over a period of this one. One more thing which I we worked with the uh, vision for a long time is that uh, see, this is a bacteria in the hospital. When you put a uh, food, it will grow in the petri dish so nicely. If you put drug, they are growing down, dying slowly. These shapes are called fractals because their dimensions are not neither one dimension or two dimensions. It's a fraction of 1.5, 1.8, I saw the dimension. You can calculate how to do dimension. So now what happened? This is the drug. You allow this to go after four or five days. Then the colony started developing. Even though antibodies are there, still they take the antibody as a food and they go. This is called bacterial resistance. The bacteria will not die for that particular antibody, then you should give one more antibody for that. Okay. There, there's a lot of mathematics involved. I don't want to go into the system. They can work on that. We're also working still on this. Very interesting nonlinear diffusions we can study. Only model is that if you apply food, it will grow. If you apply drug, it will die. And with this, we can solve this equation. People used to solve this, how this sector is forming secondary resistance, how it happens, etc. The beauty of that is, I always show this slide very interesting. The distance between these two lines, inoculum. Inoculum is put a bacteria and allow it to grow. In the, you put one line and one line. You see that all the bacteria goes above this line and below this is not in between. You put a one line and one line. Again, you see within this circle, no bacteria will grow, but outside it grows. How bacteria knows that they should not grow? Because if they grow inside, the bacteria coming from top and bottom mm -hmm. will meet each other and they have to fight because the enough food will not be available. This is called Chemotaxis. Taxis means arrangement. Chemo means chemical signals. They are repulsive in nature. They don't want it to come very nearer because otherwise they have to compete for the food and one bacteria will survive, one bacteria will. They don't want, they don't want to fight it. This one-handedness of the symbol. You can see that here people should there is no branches. Here both side branches are there. Here only one side branches are there. This is not very random. You can work out on the factual mathematics, then you can understand. See, the, in this also, it's only one side. It's all 90 degree fractals. Are so fractal is a very beautiful mathematical model. This is one, one of the examples. All spheres actually, but shapes are very different. And this dimensional, it's called fractured dimension, is given by this particular, uh, you know, whatever, sequence triangle or generalized formula, which I don't want to go into the system. So if we do the same equations into this section, for example, this will be around 1.3, 1.5, 8.5. Dimension become very, not one or two or three, it will become 1.5, 1.8, etc. called fractal dimension. That's what we did for all these bacterial colonies. They are how beautiful the colonies. When you don't give any food for more than 8, 16 hours or 18 hours one day, they all become rectangular fractals. And you can see the descent in the major, major, uh, path phase and manner path phase are constant. This is very interesting, self discipline And using this, we can say at what particular concentration of this growth is a maximum and then they die. So this will tell you the critical inhibiting concentration for this is for this perosine and salbactam for the E. coli as the cephalococcus. Uh, it doesn't matter which kind of cephalococcus is a round bacteria, E. coli is a long rod bacteria. All of them obey similar statistics. We call them this. 
And we also sit in one of the small bacteria. You can apply pressure. See, this is a bacteria, and you apply pressure, it will plant out, like a grapes, cocos means grape. You apply that between two fingers, press it. After some amount of pressure, the grape will break and dry. Can you do like this bacteria physically? Can you kill them? So you need how much? 22 atmosphere. That means in 12 atmosphere is a gas cylinder for your boss. You will all die. So you cannot do it with respect to, if you cannot do anything with respect to mechanically cleaning, so biochemical reactions are done. This is a very beautiful ecosystem. We also works on this nanophages, the tuberculosis and diseases. The beauty of this is that it is very difficult for you to uh, do it because tuberculosis is slow bacteria. It catches a longer time, take 24 hours to bifurcate. Both. India still uses these phages. What is these phages? Either they will have DNA only or RNA only. So they will go and land up and they multiply. This is what we did. It. See, for example, this inoculum. What normally they do, they do active phages into the tuberculosis bacteria and do infection. And uh, all of them will go out, one or two, if there's a possibility of going inside, do. Once they go, they multiply because they are having only RNA or DNA. So both should be needed. So a cell will evolve everything. So it will activate. Finally, this bacteria will burst. Wherever it bursts, you get the white spots will be there. By counting these white spots only, people say that whether tuberculosis is there or not. So phage therapy, I mean, diagnosis is still there. It take, all this cycle will take about one month. Now, how to do it faster with the hospitals? We, we did it with the AFM. These are all the bacteria. I don't want to go into the details. These are all nanophages when they interact just before the busting stage. You can see all the bacteria, I mean, nanophages are surrounding this bacteria. Once they went inside, they will burst and release all the bacteria one by one out. So this much is a, some of the called mycobacterium affected by D20 and bacteriophages. Very beautiful biological application. I think I, I, I will stop this. The finally, people, what they do is now scanning tunneling microscopy is called spin dissolved. So you do instead of tungsten tip, iron tip. Iron is a ferromagnet. So you can measure the spin, where the spin changes. This is called extremionic material. Extremion is something like our uh, waters in the Narmada River or etc. Okay, a very special magnetic structures, synchronic material. So very interesting. The people now try to see not only the atoms, but all those spins and how they arrange it. So for this, you need to go to very low temperature, like 4 Kelvin and very high solution for that. With this, I will stop and uh, invite questions. I hope I'm not fast enough, but then since they are faculty people, could have followed me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Slightly because of time restriction, I was a bit faster, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. It was so uh, interesting and informative also. Because uh, like I'm a person of polymer, so we very often we go with uh, uh, the SPM process, we go with SEM and TEM. Yes, but it is informative and uh, now I think uh, we can think about the SPM also if for the polymer films, as you may Yes, especially electric force makers. For soft materials also, yeah, for soft materials also, we can spread some hard on that and we can make this scanning. Yes. Uh, yes. Now the query is open for, uh, if, if anybody has a query, uh, they can ask. From participants, side, if somebody have any, any query, any question. Yeah, yeah, I'll be happy. Uh, Nishi ma'am, Bhavana ma'am, uh, both are there. Achha. You must okay. be having questions, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask them questions now. <laughs> <laughs> there is one person, Deep uh, I think it's the same. Don't okay, know. Okay, okay. I, I just what? saw them. I, I, get, I can see two, Bhavna, ma'am, and... Uh, okay, YouTube okay. Ma they are not open. <laughs> they can out, come. Out of your group, I can see two. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, they are uh, all they uh, all came all the way from Ujjain to do experiments those days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe they, they are planning or something, or maybe they are not uh, technically connected. But I have some queries uh, from yeah. my side. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned, uh, like uh, as I mentioned that uh, we are basically working on polymer electrolytes and yes. uh, uh, trying to find uh, the the structural and conductivity part for our mm. system, like mm. we are fabricating the solar cells and rechargeable batteries. And mm. for both these two systems, we are trying to make our sample uh, conductive. And mm. uh, as far as uh, making is more conductive, we, we are supposed to make our sample uh, amorphous in nature. So does yes. SPM can give this information to us whether the samples are amorphous or crystalline in nature? Uh. 
thing if uh, it it all depends upon how clean the surface and how flat the surface is there so preparing okay. this will be a bit difficult in my hmm. opinion xrd is one of the tool exafs is the right. next better tool to do this amorphous material compared to xrd because uh, you won't get much information in xrd except there's no peak at all a broad peak but exafs right. will you more synchrotron has a special exafs beam line so okay that's what i want to tell you if a student is working they can go and they are really encouraging them to do it but uh, going down to atomic resolution now i think i as i told uh, when vithi was working about uh, 15 years back i do that then manju was there some little bit of uh, other experiments i did because this, you need a patience a normal mm. operator will not like to even going down to a 100 nanometer is very difficult the noise levels and pages See, these all these experiments, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, I started in 96, no? so it's 94 and 96. Then I was handling alone up to 2002 when they joined us. Then uh, the students used to do. Some of the measurements are uh, what you are seeing an image. One image is not one image. It is a time average images of uh, like 500, 600 images. Okay, okay. The average, average of them. Okay. So they're really getting right. them up them uh, and they night times and not even AC should work. Uh, there are a lot of things are there. Uh, that has been done. Even very big people like uh, Professor Major, etc. There are many. Even Kanjilal was a UAC director. He was there. Yeah, he was yeah, there and coming and sitting. Now at that time it was the only microscope available for users, so it was very useful. Very big experiment. Good experiments. We have done it. Right. Person having a patience can still get a very good data out of it. And little bit mm. of insight of the what is happening. What's happening? Uh, like uh, the same question I asked many times with Kanjilal sir also because we worked with him and we have few publications with Kanjilal sir. So you yeah, always yeah. After, after he becomes director, he was not having any time at all for science. But before yeah. that, he was very. We are both contemporary, so we did a lot of work. On yes, very, very. Uh, any any more question from participant side? Anyone? But both conducting AFM and electric force microscope. Or even there is something called Kelvin probe. Now they can get the yeah. free energy also. That all nowadays they are installing it all. I had a much better the day. Those was 19 when I was installing. I had a new microscope with all modern futures. It is there with them. Doctor R. Hmm. Venkatesh was handling it, so he is handling now. Okay. So basically, um, uh, SPM is for to find out the the surface morphology. Uh, STM is mainly meant for these atomic resolutions. Atomic. Otherwise, conductivity gaps. But now okay. that STM will not work. STM is very sharp tip, atomically very sharp, up to a nanometer. And then by mistake, if you touch a sample, that tip is gone. And hmm. uh, it is around the tens of thousands, not small. Okay. Of course, even the AFM tip is very costlier, but an AFM mm -hmm. is very rugged. You can work okay. for 30, 40. Suppose you, you for TP is 30,000 rupees and you have already succeeded 30 samples. I mean, one sample is only 1,000 rupees affordable. Whereas <laughs> STM, by one picture, you may waste two or three samples. I mean, tips, it will be on lakh rupees. And an image of STM will be very one lakh cost. Okay. So people won't go. That's why AFM is very powerful. But very powerful. those labs where they are possible, and then we can still do that. Of right. course, people try tungsten etching in our labs and doing it out. That's why I said, no, there are some cheap methods, but the labor is more. Right. right. Yeah. So I should conclude, I think, because uh, there's yeah. no more questions for the participants. Side. A bit so, hungry uh, time, I think. <laughs> on, on, on behalf of IPS Academy Jawa, I, I keep my yeah. heartly gratitude to yeah. uh, Ganeshan, sir. He accepted my invitation very short interval of time and he's given such a wonderful informative talk on uh, SPM. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much, sir. And we'll try to connect with you also in some time offline. Yeah, yeah. Also. yeah. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. Okay. So, all the participants, now I'm closing the meeting for today and uh, we have talk uh, tomorrow uh, by Professor Rahul Singh from Korea and he will talk on ion conducting membranes. Right. So, for today, I'm closing. Thank you once again to all the participants and thank you to uh, Ganeshan, sir, once again. Yeah, so, thank you. Thank you. Good day to all, sir. Good day. Good day, sir.